Salute the black men. Salute. Salute the black men. That's how we starting it off. Kids coming home to roost. That's how we starting it off. Salute the black men. Like I said before, I said, you know, they're running, they're chasing after black men now. They're chasing after black men now. You know, when they get up there in age, I told y'all about the reach back. I, I, I explained the reach back to y'all. What ends up happening is they get older and they realize nobody is checking for them. They realize nobody is checking for them. They realize nobody is checking for them. See, it was cool when they were younger. You know what's not talked about a lot? You know what's, what's not talked about a lot? And I, and I did that. Shout out to the brothers that subscribed to the other channel. I, I did a video and I explained how in your early years, in your early years, <clears throat> Keisha... was a humongous cheater. In your early years, I'm talking about when you was a teenager to a young adult, they were cheating on you. They will leave you for something as simple as this guy dressed better. He has more Jordans than you. Or he has Jordans and you don't. He has a bigger chain than yours. Or he has a chain and you don't. They were leaving you for small things, things that wouldn't even matter to other races of women. I explained that at 18, you went outside and you got into the dating market and you realized that they wanted you to have a 600 Benz. They wanted you to have a 5 Series BMW. S straight off the showroom floor. They was, reality TV wasn't a big thing. They had some reality shows, you know, but it wasn't as huge as it was now. What they was so mystified, what they were looking at was rappers. They would look at these videos. They see rappers in these, in these uh, expensive ve vehicles. They see ball players. And they will look at you and want you to have that. 18. 18 years old. They wanted you to be caked up at 18. Insane. Insane. You had to have a penthouse. If you didn't have these things, they weren't sticking with you. So who did they get with? Oh, I'm going to get to her. I'm going to get to her. I'm just get. Let me let me let me warm up for a second. Because 
I need to explain to y'all what's happening right now. They wanted you to have six-figure earnings at 18, 20 years old. And since you didn't have that, guess what did you guess what you had to see growing up, black men? And understand something. That's not saying that you couldn't get with them. I'm saying that if you were with them, you was with them for a short period of time. How many times you got in a relationship? When you was younger with with, with with Akisha, right? Whether you was in high school or college, how many how many times you was in there? You was in a relationship for like three months, four months, and then she went and left you for another guy that had something that you didn't have. That's the story for most of young black males growing up. I'm talking about 18 to 22. 18 to 22. When you started actively dating. 18 to 22. So what did you have to see? Even as, even with, what did you have to see, black men? What did you have to see? What did you watch? You watch all the drug dealers. You watch all the drug dealers get the girls, right? Get the women, right? You watch them get the women, right? And what else, what else did you watch? You watch them get the women and guess what? You also watch them not even have to spend any money on them. That's what really blew your mind. Don't get it confused. These drug dealers wasn't spending no bread on these quiches. They may get their hair and nails done, but they weren't spending no bread. Keisha only wanted to be in the car with them. Keisha only wanted to be aligned with them. Keisha only wanted the world, her world, which is that slum that they created. She only wanted the world to know, that slum world, that she was with this guy. You sat back and you watched and you said, wait a minute. He's not doing nothing for you, but you wanted me to do something for you? Oh, that's right. Because what excites her is drug dealers, gangbangers, drama, shootouts. That's what excited her. You had a job working at a fast food restaurant, maybe, right? Maybe working at uh, Foot Locker, right, as a kid. Maybe working in the warehouse as a kid, wherever you were doing, you was you had a job, and that was not attractive. That was not attractive. Let me tell you how twisted it is. Let me tell you how twisted this is. I done seen, and I told, I said this before. I done seen brothers that had very that had decent jobs. I seen brothers have decent jobs, making decent money. That would get with a Keisha and wouldn't even tell them their profession. They will lie to these Keishas and tell them they were drug dealers just to get Keisha excited enough to be with them. I didn't see this. These dudes are driving trucks. These dudes are electricians. These dudes are electricians. 
these dudes are uh, uh, carpentry, these dudes are uh, working construction, and they would dress nice, right? They making good money, drove drove a nice car. They wouldn't tell these Keishas that because Keisha would not be interested. I told y'all about this. This was happening a lot. Back in the days. Yeah, back in the days. This was happening a lot. This was happening a lot. Come on. We got over 100 in the building so far. We just started. Get the likes up, man. Get the likes up. Get the likes up. Come on. Don't do me like that. Don't do AC like that. Don't do your big bro like that. Get the lights up. I'm er I'm up early with it. I'm up early with it. Now, I just wanted to start that off. Let me tell you about this Keisha right here, right? Let me tell you about this Keisha. This Keisha, right? She's a PhD. She go by the name of Venus Opal. And she has a business. Well, she had a business. Let me tell you what happened. Let me let me let me let me break this down. Let me break this down. She started getting online, right? bashing black men right she started bashing black men going in on black men right which is not a surprise right which is not a surprise at all you know she had you know the, the she had videos talking about how black men were broke you know black men against Black black women being against black males, right? So, what ends up happening, right? She she was getting these grants, these government government funded grants to help with to help with it. You know, Keisha's doing so well, but every time we turn around, they need government funding. They found out, they found out these people that was giving these grants, understand something about the government, right? The government don't care nothing about black men. They don't care nothing about black men. Uh, you know, they don't care about Keisha going in on black men. They don't care about Brad or Becky, anybody going on. They don't care. The only time they care is during election time. During election time. During voting seasons. So if you're going in on black men during voting season, right, then they may step in and do something about it. Like, oh, oh, we need, because they, they know we, us, as a collective, we look at it from a different lens. You can't just tell us, hey, listen, give us the vote just because you want it. Now, we're like, well, well, what you got for us? You don't got nothing for us? You don't get the vote. You don't get the vote. What you doing for us? It's always been one-sided. Keisha th still didn't wake up from that. So they trying to get us on the boat. And we like, nah, we're good. We seen what happened the last time you asked us to get on the boat.
So, you know what they did? They saw those videos. And shout out to black men, because it was um it was black men that said, okay, you want to get up here talking crazy about us? I got some connections. Let me contact some people, same people that you are getting these grants from. And guess what? They shut it down. They shut it down. And when they shut it down, guess what we got here? Let me play this for y'all. And hunted. Hold on. We're going to go. We're going to listen to this. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, black man. Please forgive me. I I didn't know, you know. Um, I didn't know. I didn't realize. I didn't realize how trapped you've been. I didn't realize how you've been targeted and hunted. Set up, lied on. I didn't know. And I want you to know that I apologize. I privileged my pain over yours. I did that. And I, there's no real excuse, but there is an explanation. Okay? As a black woman in North America, because that's where I live. I've been taught how to relate to you through white supremacy. And I never gave you the benefit of the doubt. I just took the images, the stuff that I heard my mama say when wounded women were talking about you. And then I had bad experiences with black men. I painted you all the same way that the cops paint you. And I'm wrong for that. Now, I am apologizing to you Two, in two ways. One, as a black woman. Two, as a human being. Because what was taken from you was your humanity. Every since, every since slavery, every since Nat Turner, every since 1830, you have been criminalized. You have been positioned and targeted from kindergarten. By the time you're in the third grade, you're already set up to go to prison. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that they blocked you out of every type of trade so you couldn't make money for your family. I didn't know. I didn't know that the whole structure of what it means to be American is built upon your free labor for white structures, including the penal system. That you would oh oh without oh uh black men oh we're not falling for it of course we not falling for it we know what this is but her making this video right look i want i'm gonna read some of these comments i'm gonna read some of these comments from these quiches because these quiches are like whoa what happened this, you, you got this is what quiches is saying this video, this is the comments from this video. This video is so embarrassing. Look, look, what in the mammy is this? Damn, all this simping for black men and still don't have one. This has got to be a joke. Who are you apologizing to? You don't need to apologize to them. Miss Miss uh Venus, why are you apologizing to black men? It isn't your job to heal these broken men. It's only your job to heal yourself. You're speaking about slavery. Absolutely not. Blink three times if a black man is holding you hostage, sis. These are the comments from this video.
You understand? Because she's been bashing black men and to come out with a video doing this, they like, whoa, what happened? Her real money dried up. The real money dried up. That's what happened. The real money. She tried to make money online and then try to make money out there. It doesn't work like that. Shout out to Def Debater with the super chat. He said, apology not accepted. Y'all keys is a too impressionable soft girl era and apologies is the reach back and we don't want it. They will reach back and find no one there. Yeah, that's all this is. This is a reach back. This is a reach back for two things. One is, yeah, she realized that as she get older, as she's old now that there's nobody checking for her, definitely Brad is not checking for her, Hector, Lee, Raj, right? But the other thing is her money, the money that she makes outside. You can't be on videos bashing us and then go out into the world and try to get government grants. You got to be self-made. You're not self-made. You're not self-made. So when she went out there, she went out there and, and automatically thought it was sweet. Automatically thought it was sweet. Uh, Chris Logic. Chris Logic left for a year. She had got a new job, right? A job, not a career, a job. She went and got a new job. You know what happened? She realized she can't keep making videos. Some, some, you have other people saying other things. I saw people said that she was, she was uh, basically uh, doing something fugazi with, 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 with business with other people. Some somebody in the comment section was saying she was scamming. I don't know if that's true, but I do know she went and started a job and then disappeared because out there you can't be doing that if you're not self-made. They're not self-made. They don't have their own business. They don't have their own structure. They work for somebody. So if they get caught online doing all this craziness, lying about black men, advocating for the demise of black men yeah it's going to catch up to her yeah she just dropped uh she just uh salute to the black men here she just dropped uh, uh um a post on her community page saying that she's back so what she what did you did she get fired she said she's going to come do a live and tell talk about what happened with her what, did you get fired? That's why you're back? Did you get fired? Did you lose your job? Yeah, this is nasty work. Come on, get the lights up. We got almost 200 in the belt. Get the lights up, man. Get the lights up, man. Get the lights up. Come on, get the likes up. I don't go live all the time. Do that with those other content creators. Do that, do that with them. I don't go live all the time. Do that with them. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. To be to be the workforce for whiteness since you got here, and I didn't know that. And what's worse is I didn't look. I was so hurt by you that I, I justified my I justified my righteous indignation because I was hurt. Shout out to the Blizzard King. 
He said, that's right. I'm a law. I'm I'm a law with my own law firm. No one can tell me what to do or say. K -K Keisha works for Brad and Becky. Shout out to the Blizzard King. With this with with the uh with the super chat. Yeah, you you're self-made. They can't tell you what to do. They can't tell you what to do. When you self-made, they can't tell you what to do. That's why they got to, if you see a Keisha, if you see a Keisha in this space constantly bashing black men, right? That's because this is their only bread and butter. They can do that because this is their only bread and butter. It start getting dark for them when they try to live in both worlds and, and receive, you know, and earn money. It gets dark for them. You can't do that and live in both worlds and receive and earn funds in both worlds, especially if you're working for somebody, if you're doing that type of content. If, you, if you're doing that type of content and you're living in both worlds, one is going to suffer. One is going to suffer. One is going to suffer. Hey, but matter of fact, hey, uh, um, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's just go, let's go. And I didn't look why you would hurt me. I didn't, it never crossed my mind that you were hurt too. It, I don't even know how come it, well, actually I do. Because you've been positioned as a criminal and as an animal, so I'm not even going to see you as a human being. I'm going to see you like they teach me to see you. And I fell for it. And I didn't look it up. I didn't look at the research. I didn't care. I was like, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. I mean, and, and I'm guilty of that. I did that to you. I didn't ask why you hurt me. I just was hurt. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't look. I didn't see how you've been cornered. Every, every way. I mean, every way, every decade, from chain gangs to hip hop. You're always getting blamed for violence, but we never talk about the record labels. We never talk about distribution. We always talk about the artists. We always talk about the black men being violent. Well, you, you don't get to choose what gets on air. You don't get to choose what you get to sign. If you don't do it the way that they say to do it, then you don't eat. You can't. And we make it sound like it's a character flaw when it's a structural, systematic way of keeping you in bondage. And I'm sorry for that. Because I say I love you. How come I didn't look? How come it didn't even dawn on me? It even, I even, it didn't even, I didn't even think that you could be hurt. I'm so focused on my pain. Of course, of course, of course they don't think we can be hurt. Of course. Black men, let me tell you something. You can't cry. You can't tell the world that you're going through stuff. You can't tell the world how you feel. Your feelings mean nothing. Your feelings mean nothing. Your feelings mean nothing. We watch Tyrese. We watch Tyrese cry. We watch we watched Tyrese cry. And he said, what more do they want for me? They made a joke about it. They laughed at it. They laughed at it. He said, what, what more do you want from me? That's how a lot of us feel. What more do you want for us? What more do you want from me? I put in all these hours. 
I put in all these hours. I come home. My body hurts. My hands hurt. My legs hurt. My head hurts. I'm working 60, 80, 90 hours a week. I don't get no sleep. This is the black man. I don't get no sleep. You got black men who come home, sit up for a good two hours and then got to go back out. Three hours, got to go right back out. And when they come home, they sit in the car for like 15 minutes. You know why they sit in the car for 15 minutes? Because after doing all that work, they know that when they come home, they open that door, it's not going to be, here's your food, here's your drink, here's the remote, I'm going to leave you at peace. No, they come home, yap, 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 yap. They want to tell you about their day. You don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear about their day. All you want to do is sit down and watch some television with a cold one and a hot plate of food. You don't even get that. And so when they complaining, when they in your face complaining, when they in your face complaining about small stuff, the bills is paid, there's food in the house. The first thing that come to your mind is, what more do you want from me? What more do you want from me? And then they laugh at you. You're not allowed to have feelings. You know, um, black men, every day that you wake up and you go outside, you know what you think about? A place called Willoughby. I don't know if y'all ever, you know, Remember this episode from the Twilight Zone called Willoughby. You had this guy who was working hard. He was tired of working hard. The stress of being in corporate was just too much for him. He was on his train. And the train... It, it went from dark to, to, to early morning, sun shining, and the, the train stops at this place called Willoughby. He got off. He's with this lovely lady who seems to be into him, having a genuine conversation, and all he's doing is walking the park. He's having a good, he, he's having a great time just being alive, enjoying the day. Enjoying the day. That was his heaven. But then when he went back to reality, it's back to the stress. An ungrateful wife, a boss that's, that's on top of you all the time, screaming and yelling at you about this and that. The work is the workload is just too much. But he's okay when he's on a train and that train stops at Willoughby. He never stays for a long time because he goes back. He goes back. 
He goes back to reality. So he never stays in Willoughby. He just gets off, takes a walk in the park, then get back on the train and go back into reality. One day he decides he's never coming back to reality. He's going to go to Willoughby and he's going to stay there. He goes to Willoughby. He stays there. And then it jumps to what actually happened in reality. He drops dead. He's in Willoughby, but he dropped dead. He's in his heaven mentally, but his, his physical form is gone. He worked himself to death. He worked himself to death. He just gave up. He gave up. The moral of that story is, why do you have to die to get to heaven? Why do you have to die to experience a piece of heaven? That's what they want you to do. That's that's what they that's what you've been taught since bondage. That's what you've been taught since bondage. Keisha just on Brad's perspective and his way of doing things. Only this time she's doing it as your woman. She's doing it as your woman. Oh, no, you don't get heaven here. You're only going to get it when you've done serve my purpose. You don't work yourself to the bone. And when you don't have a drop left, that's the only time you're going to be able to get heaven. But right now, this is what you have to do in order to get to heaven. You have to work like a horse until you drop. That's their mindset with you, black men. So, of course, they don't care about what you're going through. And all the ugly I had experienced at your hand that I didn't even think, well, how, how did you get there? And I can say it now on the other side of healing. You see what I'm saying? I can say it now. But I couldn't say it when you needed it. When you needed me to believe you and not them. When you needed a safe space. Just so I want to hear you out. I didn't listen. So I wanted to punish you. I wanted you to feel how you made me feel. I wanted to feel, I wanted you to feel the level of hurt and resentment and helplessness. Never understanding that is why. You lashed out. Anything that's cornered will strike. Anything that's trapped will fight. This isn't his human nature. And I, 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 I so relate to you the way white people have taught me to relate to you. I didn't even look. I didn't ask. I decided with them. And I turned you into the enemy. And I was wrong. I was wrong. And I apologize. Now, you don't have to accept my apology, okay? You don't have fire. And we won't because we know it's not genuine. We know this is performative. We understand that you're just doing that to get those folks off your back. We understand that. See, on YouTube... When not, let me let me break it down, black men. On YouTube, if their only source of income is YouTube, right? Keisha is the power. On that channel, Keisha holds the power. Keisha is the one in control. And when I mean control, I'm talking about as far as funding them, 
helping them. You know, that's the power. When you getting money out here in the real world, Keisha controls nothing. She controls nothing. They don't control a thing out here. So she makes her money, right? She makes her money. She makes her living, her real living out here. Now she realized, whoa. That sort doesn't translate outside in the real world because Keisha is not productive out here. Keisha's not productive out here. Keisha don't hold the say out here. Only in this little bubble on their YouTube channels is where they hold the say. Out here, where black men are building, where, where black men understand that the dollar goes further when you invest, where black men understand that the dollar goes further when you own, when you don't spend your money on, on foolish items. Out here, all they do is go in debt. All they do is go in debt, trying to keep up with the Joneses. I told y'all, watch these quiches, watch these quiches with these uh, 2023, 2024 Benzes and BMWs. They're hurting the most. They're hurting the most. They working until, listen, they, black, there's a difference. Black men work 60, 80, 90 hours a week because they're trying to secure a future. Keisha worked 60, 70, 80, 90 hours a week because she's living paycheck to paycheck. That's the difference. They're living paycheck to paycheck. Why you think they put in all those hours? They live in paycheck to paycheck. Black men put in all those hours to secure their children, to secure their future, make sure they're able to retire. Keisha does that to live paycheck to paycheck. I know it sounds crazy, but that's how much they spend. They don't save. They don't invest. All they do is spend. And they're in debt. All they do is spend. Let's go. And in truth, you don't, you, shit, I'm not even certain you should, given the fact that it took me 400 years to look the fuck back. You know what I'm saying? But what I want you to know is this. As a black woman, as a human being, I know what it feels like to be betrayed, to be lied on, to be beat, to be assaulted. I know what it's like. I just never imagined it happening to you. In my mind, I never saw you as a person. I saw you as an idea. I... In her mind, she never saw you as a person. Who does that sound like? Who does that sound like? In her mind, she never saw you as a person. Who does that sound like? Exactly. You weren't viewed as a whole person. 
That's exactly who they sound like. When I tell you they're Brad worshipers, that they took on the mentality of these race soldiers, it's not just to be saying it. I'm telling you, I, I gave no, a lot, nothing but proof of what they were doing right after bondage. Yes, yes, three fifths. Um, I gave you proof on what they were doing after bondage. They're telling you this is her uh, her way of apologizing, right? We know she, we know it's a form of the reach back, but she's telling how she felt, how she feels. Yeah, oh yeah, she never looked at you as a person. Nasty work, very nasty work. I saw you as a threat. I saw you as the pictures on television. I saw you as, I just saw you the way they taught me to see you. And it served me. It let me, it let me let you be the scapegoat for my failings. I'm just, not, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not scapegoating on you anymore, black man. I'm not. And I know there are a lot of black women who are wounded. And there's a lot of us who have healed. So I'm on behalf of those of us who have healed, who are willing to be accountable for our power. I apologize. And I want you to know that I forgive you. Forgive us for what? For what? Just turn it. Forgive for, for what? You. This supposed to be apology, right? You forgive us for what? <laughs> I know you're like what? Forgive us for what? For what? For protecting you? For for making sure that you were able to, to survive the, for, for clothing you? You have food, shelter, and clothing because of black men. If it wasn't for us, you wouldn't even be here. We protected you. We took care of you. It was never the other way around. Never. We took care of you. We had communities. We built communities for you and the children. We built those communities. They know, black men, they never kicked us out of our own homes. I'm getting so sick and tired of hearing, oh, they kicked us out. They never kicked us out of our own homes. We own those homes. They didn't kick us out. No, she got up and left. She got up and left. Black men came home to an empty, empty house. They came home to an empty house. They looked in the rooms. They looked for their children. She took the kids and went and built a community and turned that community into what it is today, which is that rat community, which is the slums. That's what she built. That's Keisha legacy. They, Brad gave her crumbs. Brad gave her the crumbs. Becky gave her the ideology that she don't have to be under black men. Don't have to listen to them. Don't have to follow them. But these Beckys were married that were telling them that. These Beckys were married. Under the leadership of their husbands, but was telling Keisha Hey, you don't need to be under the... You can be your own leader. You don't have to be led by anybody, but they got led by them. Brad said, listen, 
Becky right here is gonna and is gonna plant the seed inside your mind for you to get up and take the kids and leave. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you government funding. I'm going to give you Section 8. I'm going to give you food stamps. I'm going to give you a stipend. I'm going to give you a place to live. But it's not going to be nowhere near where you were living at. No, no, no. It's, it, no, you're not going to be living in a nice neighborhood. We're going to put you over here. We're going to put you with the dregs of society. We're going to put you in the slums and the projects. They got, they left thriving communities that black men have built to go live in the slums. Forgive. You didn't ask for this. <clears throat> you don't have to deal with this. Okay, but. I forgive you. And um, some people won't get this. Some people will. But for the ones who get it, please know. Shout out to Carl Hall of uh, uh, Salute to your vacation. I know you're still on vacation. Good morning, black man. Stay Keisha free. AC told you first. Don't let Valentine's Day make you soften up on them. February 15th, they go right back in Keisha mode. Still on vacation. Save that money and take a trip, black man. Shout out to Carl Hall of yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. They're going through it today. They're going through it today. They're going through it. Shout out to the brothers in the Patreon. All day, I'm going to be posting their misery. <laughs> Keisha's is like, oh, they can't believe they're single on Thanksgiving. I mean, on, on Valentine's Day. They can't believe they, 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 uh, uh, they don't have anybody on Valentine's Day. You ain't have anybody all year what are you talking about all year last year this year you, you didn't have anybody what uh, you, you didn't have anybody for a minute what are you talking about this day Th after this day it's 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 this it's a regular day for them really it's a regular day for them your boyfriend is Plastic and batteries. Plastic and batteries. You're going to spend the day going in on yourself, smoking that plastic. The plastic is burning. You're going to go, you're going to go in on yourself. It, it smells like burnt dumpster in that room, but like, like, like dumpster on fire in that room. The trash can is on fire in that room. Just wilding out on yourself. That's what you do every day. Plastic and batteries. Then you really are amazing. And then you would make it this far with no support, no help, no one on your side, no one. What did I say, black man? How many times I told y'all that? How many times I told y'all that? How many times I said to the brothers that's in the middle class, even if you're in the middle class, you got a lot of brothers over here that's doing better. You got a lot of brothers that's in the middle class. You got a lot of brothers that's in the upper middle class. But to the brothers, specifically to the brothers in the middle class, for you to make it even there is, is a miracle. You started out with nothing. I want, I want y'all to know that. You need to, that's why you think, why do you think when I start a video, I say shout out to black men. The reason why I say that is because I know you started out with nothing you you were never recognized for the hard work it took for you to come out of nothing, start from nothing, from scratch, no help, nothing. And you made it to the middle class. You made it to the middle class. 
And that and shout out to the brothers in the, in the upper middle class that's doing well too. But I'm I'm just saying, if even if you made it to the middle class, don't look at yourself and think, "Whoa, this is not good enough." No, you did that with nothing. Brad can't do that. Shout out to Machismo, uh, Machismo TV with the with the super chat. Shout out to Black Men Salute AC. Oh, uh, shout out to you, uh, McNabb. I saw the cash app. Shout out to you, McNabb. I'm telling you, you started from nothing. You started from absolutely nothing. Give your Brad had a Brad had a four hundred and fifty year head start. Four hundred and fifty year head start, and the best you can do, Brad, is have a difference of a thousand dollars per month. A thousand dollars? Well, uh, well, a little less, about eight hundred, eight hundred a month. That's the that's the difference. That's the that's the difference. That's it. That's it. That's the difference. Give us a 450 year head start. You wouldn't even know what we look like. They wouldn't know what we look like, black men. We'd be so out of reach. They have a 450 year head start. And that's the gap. That's the closest. That's the furthest as far as the gap you can uh you can provide. That's that's the gap right there, right there. That's it. Are you kidding me? You can't widen the gap any further with a 450 year head start. That's that's the widest you can have the gap. You know what that means, black men? That as far as being progressive, as far as uh you know, as far as keep keep it moving, keep elevating yourself, you're way above them. You're above them. You're above Hector. They they can't tell you nothing. They can't tell you nothing. Brad left his home. Brad left his home. He had help. They gave Brad money. They gave Brad resources, and that's the furthest as far as how wide the gap. That's how wide it is. Are you kidding me? So a black man starts out with nothing, and you start out with resources and help, and that's the furthest you can get? You can't tell us nothing, man. You corner. None of that. And you're still here, and you still love me. Even though I've turned my back on you. Shout out to the shout out to the brothers in it. We got 280 here. We got 280 in the building. Shout out to the brothers. That's love. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's what you've done. As a black man, you never loved me. And I blamed you when my father went away. I thought, you know, if my father loved me, why would he leave me? Well, he's the same man who kept me alive when my mother wanted to abort me. So which one is more valuable? My life or my uncle for expectation of what you should or should not do? You hear that? Her mother wanted to send her to the upper room. Shout out to Carl Hall the Hustle with the with the super chat. Shout out to black men who fixed their teeth as adults. Keisha had a medical card but didn't fix your grill. 
but pay for baby, yeah, upper rooms with it. If the school didn't require it, you didn't get it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fact, car holder. Now, understand, she had all this to say today. Well, not today, but you get what I'm saying. She had all this to say, right? She had all this in her head, but still, still was making videos bashing black men. When you said that your father is the reason why you're here, because your mother wanted to send you to the upper room. Never mind what you're dealing with. Never mind what we got three. We got over 300 in the building. Salute to the brothers. You're going through. Never mind your trauma. Never mind your pain. Oh, fuck that. That doesn't count for me. You see what I'm saying? And that's, so, and that's what I'm dealing with is the level at which I have disappeared your humanity. The, the, the level of benefit I've gotten because I'm a girl. They wouldn't, I could go to school. I can get the, I could, I could, they didn't put me in the prison pipeline. They put me in, 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 in reading classes because I'm not a threat, because I'm not a dude. You see what I'm saying? But as a black woman, I got things that you could never get because I'm a girl. And yet, and still, I'm relating to you like the, the ground is even, is, is, is even? It's never been fucking even. It's never been even. The fact that you are a man and you learn masculinity through white shit? The watching white motherfuckers do some bullshit? No. They, see, this what she don't get. They didn't give you nothing, Keisha. They didn't give you nothing. Nothing compared to what black men gave them. They gave them nothing. And what I mean by this, understand this. I'm not talking about government, even though this is part. This is part of the, a government plan. When you talk about um, affirmative action, right? When you talk about affirmative action, that was for them. That was for them. They wanted to put Keisha inside corporate to look down on brothers. But what you don't understand and what you don't know, a lot of y'all don't know is this. When they put Keisha in corporate, they was giving Keisha the bare minimum. I told you, Keisha was in corporate as a CEO making 35,000. Remember we did, remember, I think I told y'all, I remember I, I did these videos like last year. We went through the numbers, we went through the day. They were CEOs getting like 35,000 in the 90s. In the 90s. Looking down on black men. Their counter their so-called counterparts, right? Cuz that's what they're looking at it. Their so-called counterparts in 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 corporate America, right? Brad, cuz that's how they were looking at it. Was making 90 80, 90 as CEOs, they had Keisha as the workhorse. They said, Keisha, we want you to do exactly what I'm doing. Keisha was just happy to be there. She was getting paid 35000 as a CEO or CEO. Looking down on black men that were plumbers getting paid Fifty to sixty thousand dollars per year, back in the nineties. This is a fact. They didn't put Keisha in there to elevate Keisha. They put her in there so she can take over the workload for cheap. They treated her like a a, a Hector that just jumped over the border. She was the Hector oh, from over the border in the 90s. I need y'all to understand that. I need y'all to know this. I need y'all to know this, black men. You need to know this. They were looking down on brothers that was making more than them. And they was in corporate. 
just because they didn't wear suit. Just because they didn't wear a suit. Just because they didn't wear a suit. I want, um, during the, you know what I noticed during the early 2000s? You know what I noticed during the early 2000s? When you had black men, I, I, I want y'all to remember the early 2000s, right? Black men, you had, you still do, but around that time, you had a lot of black men in construction. You had a lot of black men in construction. Brad, you had a bunch of Brads in construction, but I remember an influx of a whole bunch of brothers being in construction, right? They're, you you see them outside after work. They're dirty. They're filthy. They've been working all day. They got their work helmet on. You know who was attracted to those guys? You know who was attracted to those guys? You know who looked at those guys and, and, and thought... They was attractive, Becky's and Maria's. Becky's and Maria's would see these guys in the street and their work clothes filthy, dirt all on them, and will be attracted to these guys to the point they would start conversations with them. You know who wouldn't start conversations with them? You know who would stay away from them? Keisha. Keisha would stay away from them. Oh, look at him. He's filthy. He's filthy. I know what I'm talking about, man. Shout out to Salty with the 99.99. What's happening, Salty? We in here. He said, we. Shout out to you. Shout out to Salty, man. Salute to you, Salty. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, we in here right now, Salty. We in here. We in here cooking right now. We in here cooking right now. We in here cooking. You got this Keisha in here who's talking about she apologized. She's been bashing. Black men, That's this is the equivalent of Cynthia G, right? For any black men, for any, any of these Keishas that's online bashing us, this is the equivalent of Cynthia G and the rest of them coming out of nowhere saying that they apologize and making this type of video. This is the equivalent of that. The difference is the reason why Cynthia G, you know, didn't have, didn't do it or, or the rest of them didn't feel the wrath is because YouTube is basically all they have. Cynthia G is hurting right now. I, yeah, she's hurting right now. She is hurting right now. You know she's at the government building asking for more resources. You know she's at the government building. Now, that, that, now let's let's go. Let's go. And that's how you learn masculinity. Your father wasn't home, but they took his ass to the chain gang. They would pick up black men and throw them in prison. We thought most of, we thought black men left. We were wrong. They got took. But you wouldn't know that because you're in the history books. You gotta find that. You gotta look for that. They don't talk about how black men are systematically put in prison to to become.
become firefighters for forest fires, but when they leave, they can't get that job. But you can die for the state. They don't talk about how welfare was built in the 70s so that black women could get money if you weren't in the household to punish you for not being married to her as a moralistic argument. But we don't know that because that's not in the books. No one teaches us that. Because that never happened with black men. That's why. That's why. First of all, it's about 700,000 black males in prison. That's not that's not even close to the majority. That's not even close to, you know, uh to that that's that's less than the pookies that's out there knocking them all up. This this myth about that black men are just in prison. No, no. It's only about 700,000 of them in it. Amongst millions. Yeah, that yeah, but yeah, probably probably around you said barely three percent. Yeah, cl close to that. But what I'm saying is when it comes to uh Black men in these in these these numbers and these statistics, that's always been perpetuated through Keisha. Also, this thing about you know when they were in government housing, uh, you know the black man couldn't be there. That was one of the stipulations. No, no, that wasn't the stipulations for us because. You left black men to be there. You left black men to be there. The stipulation was you couldn't have a man in the house, period. You couldn't have a man there at all. And the reason why is because then you will have to count his, uh, his income. And these are income, these are, you know, um, these are income, uh, income based housing, meaning it goes off of your income. So if you live in there and you got another guy living there, they have to go off his, his income also, which might get you out of there. So if you're making 10,000, right? If you're making $10,000 and they say that, you can't be above $10,000 in order to live here or you're going to have to pay more or move out. You can't have another person in there that makes ten dollars or $15,000 more because this is income-based housing. And black men weren't there because black men decided, okay, since you didn't want to be under our leadership, and you left the communities, you know what black men did? They branched out in every other, they branched out to other communities. They just branched out. That's what black men did. They branched out everywhere. They say, you know what? I'm a body here. That's why you got black men all over, but you got Keisha all stuck in these little hubs, all stuck in these little areas. When you got black men all over. Traveling man, uh, underlive these lies against us, bro. Shout out to Traveling Man with the super chat. Uh, um, uh, hold on. Shout out to Isaac K with the super chat. He said million dollar job titles with minimum wage salaries. Been saying that for years. You see it in all of media. Black women consumed in the nineties, present. Yeah. Uh, do y'all remember the movies? Do y'all remember the movies? What movie was it? Was it Mo Money? Was it Mo Money with Damon Damon Wayans? Black women were working in corporate while black men were working in 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 the uh in the in the male in the male in the male, in the male work room. They were working in the mail room in the building. How many? How many of those you saw? We saw that in more money, right? 
We saw that in more money. We saw that in more money. And then what else? What other movie we saw that in? We saw that in Boomerang, right? Remember? Black women were, were working in corporate, black men working in the mailroom. In the 90s, you had a bunch of movies like that. Yeah, Low Down, Dirty Shane. Yeah, a lot of these movies back then, you had a lot. Strictly Business, yep. Strictly Business. You had a lot of those movies in the 90s where they show Keisha and corporate black men working in the mailroom. Yeah, and Wu was the, 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 the movie Wu, yep. These keishas were these keishas was working in corporate as CEOs making $35,000 per year and thought that was a come up. Boomerang, yeah, Boomerang. I did I say Boomerang? Yeah, it was in Boomerang. Yeah, all you saw was they was working in corporate, black men working in the mailroom. That was the that was the trope for the early nineties. So what we listen to are the other hurt black women who talk about black men, and we listen to it like it's the truth, and then we see it on TV, and then we relate to you like it's who you are, and you become it. Because our power as black women manifests. We give life and we take it. We take it. The moment we take our love away, we hurt you. To punish you for being as wounded as we are. So I apologize. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I didn't account for that you did everything you could do. I mean, you really did. You tried to stay in school, but because you're a black boy and you get active, they label you as disruptive. And then they put you the fuck out, but they keep the girls in and the white kids in because they're not a threat. So you get in the habit of getting put out of school. So of course you're gonna take to the streets. You can't get a job. I mean, there's no job you can get <laughs> that is worth more than pennies. So of course you're going to go illegal. What other fucking option do you got? I mean, really? No. No. Isaac K with the super chat again. I saw it in two can play that game. You'd be surprised how little you can pay a black. Yeah, most women, if you give her a desk and a job title, and let her dress up social capital, Trump's financial capital. Yeah. Yeah, Isaac. Yeah, we saw that. We saw that. We saw that in the early 90s. We saw that. That's all we saw. Keisha up here off the top, the, the, the top floor and in and, and corporate while the brothers is way down below. Way down below in the mailroom. Keisha's up there in heaven. The brothers are down there in hell. That's that was the symbolism. Now, what she's talking about, no. The guys that they went for, and I said this, that that's why I wanted the premise. In the, in the beginning of this video, I was telling y'all how brothers were, the brothers that had jobs, the young brothers that had jobs, the young brothers. I saw, growing up, I saw so many young brothers with jobs. You can't tell me young brothers didn't have jobs. I saw them, I saw them working in 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 in, in uh you know in stores. I saw them working in a mall. I saw them uh working in supermarkets. I saw them working in hardware stores. I'm talking about young brothers. I'm talking about young brothers. 
I saw them working in train stations. I saw young brothers, young brothers, whatever jobs they can get without any skills, I saw them looking for jobs and finding them and getting them. Guess what? Keisha didn't want to stay with those guys. Oh, yeah. They not in sales. Those wasn't in sales. That, that's why they, they're throwing that word around. is ridiculous. They were able to get women. And when I say women, I'm talking about the Keisha because that's all they were exposed to. It's just that Keisha wouldn't stay with them because they would go to the next guy that had more than them. So if they were on a train or on a bus and they met a guy that had a car, this is how Keisha operated. If they met a guy that had a car, she would leave the guy that was on a bus for the guy that was on the car, that owned the car. That was their way of looking at it as they need to do better than the next guy, not knowing that that guy, he's going to continue to you know, do what he does as far as be productive, right? And and maybe down the line, he, he uh, you know, get a trade. Maybe down the line, he uh, expand into something else to further his education or whatever. But she never stood around to find out what's going to happen with any of these guys. She just kept going for the next one to the next one to the next one because one had better than the other one. So she would get with this guy that had a car, right? And then leave that guy who had a car for another guy that had a better looking car. That's how Keisha operated. She never stayed with the same guy. So these weren't incels. It's just that Keisha was a cheater. She would cheat on you for anybody that had a little bit more than you have. And that's how Keisha always have moved. They move like that now. They would cheat on you for the littlest things. They would cheat on you for the little bit, the littlest things. So, yeah, yeah, exactly, Salty. They would go for the dope boy. Yeah, they would go for those guys immediately because those guys had the money that these, that these young guys didn't have. Illegally. That's why I said in the beginning of the video, imagine going out into the world, into the dating scene. You're 18 years old, 18, 19, 20 years old, and you're being told that in order for you to get with a woman that or get or get with a woman that wants to be with you or wants to build with you, you gotta have a 600 Benz. You gotta have a Benz. You got to be making uh, $5,000 a week. You got to have a penthouse. If not a penthouse, at least a condo. Remember. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You had to have you had to have everything. You saw them as young men, you saw them get with these dudes. You saw them get with the dealers. You saw that. You saw that. I don't know what she's talking about. But we, we're not accepting no apologies. We're not accepting no reach back. We're not accepting none of that. This is what has this is what's going on now, black men. They want you to accept the reach back. They're crying now. They're, oh, oh, we're sorry. 
And the moment you get enough strikes against you, now you got a record. Now you got a felony. Now you can't get now you can't get a mortgage. You can't get a fucking loan. You can't go to school. You can't do any of that shit. You can't. Because there's no structure set in place for you to be able to do that. Nothing is set up for you to win. Nothing. And because and and it's not. That's the thing, black men. It's not. That's why it's more important to understand that when you do win, you need to let the world know, yes, I'm here. I won. And y'all tried to make me fail. Y'all were putting obstacles in front of me. You wanted me to fail. I won. You need to pat yourself on the back. You need to pat yourself on the back, black men. You are always told you can't give yourself props. They try to make you feel ashamed for looking in the mirror and saying, yeah, you that dude, you that dude. They don't want you to do that. They don't want you to look at yourself and say, hey, yeah, I'm a winner. I won. I'm the prize here. They don't want you to say that. That young brother that got his law degree, do y'all remember his name? He just said he got his law degree. He's the one that, you know, he's the one that's the prize because he's going to be earning more. That makes him more suitable. That makes him more desirable out there in the world. And they went in on him. I forgot the young brother's name. I forgot the brother's name, man. I forgot the brother's name. Yeah, CJ King. Yeah, Sulu. Yeah, CJ King. They went in on him. I'm a black woman. I get access by virtue of me being non threatening. And you don't get that luxury because we don't relate to you as a human being. We relate to you as a threat. And because you have them intended to, you have scars, you have wounds, you have traumas, you have hurts, you have bruises that you can't even say because as a man, you, you suffer in silence. And I've let you suffer in silence. Because I was so mad at you. I was so mad at you. Oh, I was so mad at you from, from slavery <laughs> to today. I've been mad because I felt like you didn't take care of me. You didn't protect me. You didn't look out for me. Never kneeling with the fact that you couldn't. They had a gun to your head. They had a whip in their hand. No, 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 no. They did with all that happening to them. See, Keisha... You know, while brothers were putting their their lives on the line, I did the numbers about how many brothers ended up, you know, meeting their demise. Did the numbers. We talking thousands, thousands of brothers. Yeah, shout out to Carl Hall. I'm not reading that call. Come on. I'm not reading that. What you mean? You trying to get the stream shut down. No, but no, I, I get that. I know what he mean. When we was kids. When we was kids, when we were kids, when we was kids, it was grown. I, no, I know what he mean. I, I know what he mean. This is what he mean. When we were kids and w when we were dating, you had the, the, the older dudes 
the older dudes, they were they were run right to them. Yeah, yeah, when we was kids. Yeah, <laughs> he trying to he trying to get the Probably sipping on the daiquiri, just 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 tapping up, just wild. <laughs> and they had a chain on you too. And somehow or another, my mind didn't connect the dots. Cause I think I believe that as a man you were supposed to, but as a human being you weren't equipped to. As a human being, you did not get any kind of training, education, guidance, protection. You were just as vulnerable as I am. You're more. And we never talk about you like that. We always talk to you or about you like you should know. How? How would you know what to do? How? I, I, I marvel at my own ignorance. I'm like, baby, this what the where you been? And it's not, and the thing is, it's in books. If we look it up, we can find it. It ain't hard to find. The 13th Amendment about a slavery, but it built into it a clause that says, unless you're imprisoned. So systematically, since 1685, they have been creating laws to enslave you, not because of a crime, but because they wanted to pimp your work ethic. They wanted to pimp your body to slave for them for piss. And it's so written into law. It's so built into structures and systems. It's invisible to us as black women. So we're saying, okay, try harder, be accountable, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. We sound like white extremists talking to you if we tell the truth about it. What did I say? And I'm telling you, the, her comment section, they're going in on her. They calling her mammies. They're calling her a traitor, all type stuff. Telling her to blink if she's being held hostage. Saying that, she, you know, she don't know what she's talking about because she's a DV victim. Why are you saying this? The devil is a liar. I rebuke this whole message, sis. This is what this is. This is her comment section. Miss girl, delete this nonsensical BS and seek therapy. This is this is what's being said in her comment section. Because she made videos bashing black men. Now they like, whoa, what's going on? Isaac K with the super chat. I was a toddler when Boomerang came out, but it was prophetic. It laid the blueprint for how... Let me see. It laid the blueprint for how... It laid the proof. Excuse me, I'm going up too fast. All right, I see y'all chatting. I see y'all. Let me. Uh, I was a toddler when Boomerang came out, but it was prophetic. It laid the blueprint for how black relationships in corporate America are. People's loyalties and values really showed after the '90s. That's a fact, Isaac. That's a fact. Because the thing is, they try to make it seem like black men weren't doing anything if they weren't in corporate America. They weren't making any money. Black men were making far more money than Keisha was in corporate America while than um uh you know than the brothers that was in the plumbing, electrical, even brothers that was driving the buses back then. A lot of brothers went to state, you know, state jobs, city jobs, right? They were making way more money than Keisha 
they was making the money Keisha should have been making as a corp in corporate as a CEO. They was making that money. She was in there with a title. That's it. A title. That's it. That's it. Fast lines, art and design. What's happening with the super chat? It's getting dark for Keisha out here. Yeah. I say it all the time. It's getting dark for them. It's getting dark. Yeah, this is a, yeah. First of all, yeah, this is a fake apology. All right. This is a fake apology. Shout out to Black Marvel with the super chat. He said, I missed the, the last few lives. And barely made this one, but I wanted to send support your way. Salute to you, AC. Salute to you, Black Mob. Yeah. Yeah. This is a fake apology. See, this apology is not for us, really. It's for the people that's stopping her money outside. It's for the people stopping her money outside. She made her money outside. She got those degrees, those the PhDs. She got those outside. She used them to make money outside. But you can't make money outside because you're online going in on us. And you're trying to have you you're, you're trying to live both worlds. You can't. They can't live both worlds. They can't. You got to be self-made. Like the Blizzard King said, you had Dennis Berlin, who who was in the chat. He said it. He he said he's a self-made million. He's a self-made man himself. That's why they can't tell him what to do. They can't tell them what to do. They can't tell them what to do. Therefore, if they can't tell you what to do out there in that because of what you're doing online, then they have no power. They have no power over you. She don't have that out there. She's working for somebody. She's getting grants from somebody. Therefore, those people can shut you down. It's just like Section 8. Just like Section 8. They treating her just like Section 8. Yeah, yeah. All it takes for you is to miss one, one piece of paperwork that you're supposed to sign. And, you, and you're out of there. You're gone. All it takes is for them to say they're not funding you anymore. You're gone. You're out of here. All they have to say is, you know what, Keisha? We don't gave you enough money, uh, government services. We're not helping you out anymore. Your Section 8 cut. Now you're done. Keisha plays. Shout out to Jay Gray. Keisha plays hide and seek forever when Brad get mad. Yeah, that's a. Who is this Looney Tune? Was this Looney Tune? Uh, uh, yeah, she's a she's a she's a, a doctor, a doctor of foolishness. Let's listen to the rest. It's sometimes we use the law against you. We call the police on you. We withhold your kids from you. We make it your fault that you we, we call you all kinds of shit. Never mind the provocation. Never mind the fact that we provoked it. Never mind that our wounds triggered yours. But you become the bad guy and we're not accountable. I'm not okay with it. Not anymore. I'm not. So, I want you to know, black man, that I love you. I love you as a brother. I love you as a father. I love you as an uncle. 
I'm sick of them saying about absentee fathers. It's not the truth. You just have to look it up. Black men are co-parenting children. Just because they have their mother's address does not mean that black men are not being dads. It's not the truth. None of it's the truth. But you have to go look for it to see it, sis. If you don't look for it, you won't see it. I didn't see it. And I have four degrees. I have a PhD from Stanford. I have more education than most people will ever have in a lifetime. And it never dawned on me to go look. That's a fact, Salty. So you list all the plays. That's a fact. That's a fact. So you list all the plays. So it's deliberate. Yeah, that's a fact. She listed all the plays. And this is a PhD, which means they know what they're doing, black men. They're not ignorant to the fact. They know what they're doing. I didn't know. And, it's, and I'm not saying that it's an excuse. It's an explanation. So, please know that you weren't wrong. I'm wrong. Okay? I take full responsibility for our relationship. You didn't leave me. I left you. That say they left. They left. They got up and left. They got up and left. They got up and left. They didn't, we didn't say, hey, you gotta leave. They got up and left and took the kids. Then put you on child support. While the kids was growing up in poverty. Those same children grew up under Keisha and then they became the same males that they ended up complaining about. Keisha is a pookie maker. Pookie is their problem. I left you to deal with this by yourself. Uh, I got you. I got you right now. I got you right now, car hauler. Bam. There you go. And I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not leaving you. I'm not leaving you alone in this. I'm not doing it. And I want you to know that I think you're glorious. And I want you to know that I believe you. I believe you. You didn't lie. I didn't listen. And I want you to know that I forgive you for all the wounds you acted out on me. Right, kill Bonnet. Yes, not- the damage is done. This is a fake apology, but the damage is done. The damage is done. The character, I know that's the wound. And I thank you for making room for my wounds, for forgiving me every slight, for withholding your kids from me, for lying on you, for fucking up your car, for fucking up your credit, for fucking your best friend to get back at you. I apologize. Yeah, how foul is that? How foul is that? How many how many times we done seen that? Sleeping with your friend. He don't have to be your best friend. He don't even have to be a friend. He could be just somebody you 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 know, he's an associate of yours or somebody that you just cool with. How many times you done seen them do that? But I've seen them do it to best friends. How foul is that? Even And if he does that, we understand that that's not your friend if he does that. 
But how? why would you do something like that? Now he's out of a girlfriend, a wife, whatever she is to him. He's out of a girlfriend and a best friend because you wanted to destroy his life. You wanted to make him miserable. Yeah, this is nasty. It's very nasty. Black woman, I did that. But I'm woman enough to be responsible for it. Okay? So you are a human being. You have fears. You have feelings. You have rights. And you have my respect. You don't care about your respect. You have it because you're here. It's not about provision. It's not about protection. It's about you are a human being. You're somebody, little boy. You're some father's joy. You're some mother's pride. And we never talk about you like that. We never see you like that. We're not taught to see you like that, right? So you don't even get to see yourself reflected as a person, not a workhorse for love or inclusion or appreciation. That's not, I'm not doing it. You are the manifestation of God. And I don't care whether you are a black Israelite, you're a black Moor, Hotep, trans, atheist, Christian, I don't give a fuck what you believe. I don't care how you do it, okay? As far as I'm concerned, that which is greater than I am, that which made the fucking stars and the trees, that motherfucker, you are him. You are the physical embodiment of the character of God. And I will only relate to God in you. I will not relate to you like your wounds. I'm not doing it. I will shut the fuck up first before I relate to you. Like your wounds. You're not your wounds. You have wounds, but you're not your wounds. And I just need you to know that you're not alone in this. And I need you to get well. There's nothing wrong with you. You just haven't been tended to. But to be fair, no one's been tending to you, so how would you know better? I just need you well, okay? I can't do it for you. Nobody can. That's when you're in God. But I can walk with you. I can walk side by side with you. I can listen. I can understand. I can speak to the highest part of you. And I can love you the way that we love our children. I can tend to the way I would one of my sister girlfriends. Because as a human being, you deserve to be tended to. That's not a lot to ask. Yeah, all this. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing it because I need y'all to let me explain this to y'all, right? Let me explain what's happening with her, right? They have they took they took away her financial ability out there. All right. Uh shout to salty salty. Salty with the super chat. He said, her emotional range and dramatic cries gives off she, he, then succubus energy. Rebuke them and depart to the tropics. Yes. Yes. Believer 89 with the super chat. AC, this is all Keisha's in the next 10 years calling us God and failure with Brad. Sleazy Keisha, too late, you bums. Yeah, yeah. All this. All this.
all this Let me look, you know, when their money starts drying up out there, it gets, it start really getting dark for them. It start really getting dark for them when their money start getting dry, when their money getting dry. They took away her funding out there, right? For her business. Because they saw what she was doing online. They saw what she was doing online. They saw what she was doing on other social media platforms. And she saw that, wait a minute, she's getting more money out there in the world than she is on these social media platforms. But they're cutting that off because what she's saying online. So she said what she has to do is she has to back and make a video apologizing. That way, the next time they approach her about her online antics, she could basically keep this video. She could basically point them to this video and say, hey, she atoned for her actions. Here's the video right here. Here's my public apology. You know how, in you know how these politicians get caught for saying something, especially when it comes to these Brad politicians, they get caught for saying something racist or whatever, and they they make a public apology. And if anything comes up about those things that he said in the past, he could just point to that one public apology. He made. He's like, listen, I already apologized for that. I'm online. I'm on record apologizing for it. That's what she has. This is her public apology, and this is her video where she can point people to to say she apologized for her actions. No, it's it's it, just like those racist brads. We know they don't mean it. But this is that, and it's and it's the reach back. And it's the reach back. And it's the reach back. I see. Shout out to Mr. Uh, Mr. Greg Nificent for the super chat. Shout out to you. I see you. For someone who said they love you. And I love you. I love you so much. You will never know how much. You can't. You can't know that. There's a whole group of us <clears throat> who love you, black man. And we're waking up. Some of us are sooner, earlier than later. You know what I'm saying? Some of us took a little longer, you know. But you're worthy. Some of you, it's going to take a little longer, right? Meaning, the age you are now, you in your forties, you in your forties. Yeah, that's what it. That's what they mean. That's what they mean. If they didn't want you in their prime, reject them in their decline. If they did not want you in their prime, reject them in their decline. Too many black men, too many black men wanted relationships. That's the thing about black men. Black men wanted relationships. They wanted what black men can give them. That's it. That's it. That's all they wanted, what black men can give them. What, did you, what do you got? That's why everything is about money. They're so poor. They're so poor and destitute. They have kids. They have debt. 
They're getting evicted. All they can think about is money. All they think about, all they think, all they can think about is money. It's such a turnoff. It's such a turnoff. That's why I tell brothers, stop, stop dealing with them. Stop talking to them. Leave them to their own device. Leave them alone because it's such a turnoff. I've seen brothers inbox them, say something is something is decent is good morning. They respond back with hit hit the cash app. What? He just said good morning. Here's my cash app. He just said good morning. You're a bum. Black men are tired of this. Black men are tired of this. That's why I keep telling you, black men, stop listening to these channels where they're telling you that there's good ones out there. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. You're setting yourself up. Shout out to Salty. He said, hmm, loving a black man and going against the sisterhood or just shut up and play neutral. Uh, I'll take second option. Neutrality condones evil. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got a lot of these, these channels that play the fence because they want Keisha supporters. They want Keisha supporters. They want, they're telling you, black men, they're telling you that there's some good ones out there. I tell you, don't even look at it like that at all. Look at it as they, they don't exist. I don't tell you there's good ones out there. I say all of them. You know why? Because if I tell you there's good ones out there, right? What you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, AC said there's some good ones out there. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to find that unicorn. You know what's going to happen as soon as you go out there looking for this unicorn? Let's say, let's say it's 50 of them. By the time you find that unicorn, which probably will be around the 48th person, the 48th Keisha, right? You're going to be broke. You're going to be broken. You're going to be exhausted. You're going to be of no use to nobody, not even yourself. You're not even going to be mentally there. They're going to put you through so much. You probably... You, by the time you get to that unicorn, you probably done shot at. By the time you get to that unicorn, you probably done caught a couple of STDs. By the time you done get to that unicorn, you probably got jumped a couple of times. By the time you get to that unicorn, you probably been robbed a couple of times. By the time you get to that unicorn, you probably done stabbed or shot a couple of times. By the time you done get to that unicorn, you pro your, your funds, your bank accounts done got drained a couple of times. By the time you get to that unicorn, you probably done got the police called on you a couple of times. By the time you get to that unicorn, you probably lot been locked up a, a few times. By the time you get to that unicorn, your life will be destroyed. Your life will be destroyed. That's why I don't tell you there's good ones out there. That's why I don't tell you that. Because it's me telling you that is setting you up for failure, setting you up to get hurt, setting you up to lose everything you done worked hard to get. That's a setup. That's why I tell you, stop listening to these channels. It's a setup. They don't care about you. They could care less about you. They don't care nothing about you, black men, nothing.
They don't care nothing about you. They don't care. Only thing they care about is what you can do for them. They done told you. These dudes done told you. They not rocking with you no more. They done told you that. They told you they not rocking with you no more because the, the Keisha supports them more than you do. They done told you this. I heard them myself. They done told you this. These dudes with Keisha chant got, that got Keisha's all on their channels. They done told you this. Which means that prior to that, even though you helped build their channel, prior to that, they really wasn't, they really, they weren't genuine at all. This was just the front. That was just the front to get your support. Once they got your support, it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. Once they got your support, it wasn't good enough. Now they now they want other audience. Now they want Brad's, they want Hector's, they want Keisha's, they want um Lee's, they want everybody. They want everybody there. Because it was never about black men from the beginning, man. It was never about black men from the beginning. It was never about waking black men up. I tell y'all, stay away from them, all of them, and watch your life change. <clears throat> you have to be told that. You have to be told that. This this will literally save your life. Keeping them out of it. Keep them out of your life and your life will be saved. This is literally saving your life. This is not a joke to me. It's not a game to me. I done seen brothers lose everything they had. I done seen brothers go through it dealing with them. I done seen brothers go through it. I done seen them put brothers through it. I done seen them make brothers feel like there was nothing left on the planet for them. They lost their children. They lost their lives. I mean, not a lot. They lost they well basically they saying that they lost they didn't literally lose their life, but they saying their life was ruined. They lost it. They lost their children. They couldn't, you know, she took the children away from them. They lost their place. They lost their careers. They ended up in, in prison. Some of them ended up in prison for lies. Who remember that story I did? The mother was so upset with the father, she told the daughter to lie on the father. She told the daughter to lie on the father and said that he did something inappropriate with her. The daughter listened to the mother and told them that. The father ended up in prison. The daughter gets older, tells the DA, hey, listen, I made that up. I made that up. I made this whole story up. The mother even came forward and said, yeah, she made the story up. The mother said it too. Yeah, she, she told her to make the story up. The DA still didn't do anything about it. This, this happened like 
This happened like around 1999, nine, uh, the year 2000. He's still in jail. He's still in prison. And not only is he in prison, they made a law and order SUV about it. I didn't know that. But not only is he still in prison, he's still in prison with that tag. Can you imagine what he's been through in prison with that tag? And he's innocent? I want y'all to think about that. He's in prison with that tag. And he was lied on. This wasn't no bum. This was an everyday working black man from the military. He came home from the military, married, got a job, and he was the provider. Can you imagine if he was in this space before... If, if if this space was around, I'm not saying that can you imagine if this space is, existed and he was in this space and he was told this? Can you imagine if he had any understanding? If he had under any understanding of who they were before he even pursued her or, or ended up with her, his life would have been totally different. His life would have been totally different. Instead, he's been in there for about 25 years. We don't know what's we we know we know it hasn't been pleasant. We don't know what has happened to them. We can guess, but we know it hasn't been pleasant with that tag. We know he ain't doing no easy, no easy time in there with that tag. And he's innocent. And he's innocent. He's innocent. And in this Keisha, y'all heard this Keisha, like like Salty said, she knew all the plays. She knew all the plays. But you still went through with them because you didn't care. The only reason why you're making this video is because you're washed. You're washed. Today's Valentine's Day, right? Today is Valentine's Day. Ray Rizzle from the Blizzle ain't get her nothing. Ray Rizzle from the Blizzle got her nothing. Matter of fact, Ray Rizzo asked her for some money. Ray Rizzo woke up, took on a, the usual tizzy tour, and said, yeah, let, let me hold something. She wa she's going to get a Manny and Petty and get her hair done so she can sit on the couch tonight. Nobody's checking for them. Nobody's checking for them. They're lonely. Y'all see the video? Y'all seen the video I dropped yesterday? Uh, 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 last night? Y'all seen the video I dropped last night? No, yesterday, yeah. You got these Keisha's talking about, oh, here's, here's some tips on... How how to uh be lonely on Valentine's Day? What? <laughs> how to deal with loneliness as a single mom on Valentine's Day? Y'all are a joke. Y'all are a joke. You had the nerve to 
bash black men. Hold on. Let me give me give me a sec. Let me let me look. Give me a second, black man. Let me I'm I'm a, let me search for something real quick. I need y'all to understand something. Let me Hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. I'm going to let y'all listen to this. Let me start off with this disclaimer. If you can't engage in the spirit of love and, and, and dignity, do not host. Just don't. Billionaires, I'm saying billionaires who are black women is a, is, is a problem for some people. So for some black men and they want to let me know it they uh, read the comments you'll see it you'll see it you'll see it right i'm going to give you an example all right and then i'll handle white privilege in a minute so y'all know that i'm doing my you know my start startup right and so there's a black guy great man smart man no hate just really the thing that i'm dealing with. all right y'all y'all there y'all here Can y'all hear me? Let's go. And I want y'all to start contending with this, black woman, is whenever you stand up for yourself, there's a whole group. I'm not saying all black men, the ones who are healed and love their moms. There's a whole nother group who feel like you're talking down to them. And they're not even connected conversations. But the fact that I'm not saying black male billionaires or black people billionaires, I'm saying billionaires who are black women, is a, is, is a problem for some people, so for some black men, and they want to let me know it. They uh, read the comments, you'll see it, you'll see it, you'll see it, right? I'm gonna give you an example, all right? And then I'll handle white privilege in a minute. So, there's a, there's say, this is the same woman. This is the same woman. That same woman. <laughs> this is a video from a couple of years ago. She was getting away with a lot of this, talking down about black men. Until they, until they came and stopped her. Because you, he does not, he's not supposed to follow you. You supposed to follow him. Did you hear that? Did 
Did y'all hear that? He's not supposed to follow you. Let me replay that. Let me replay that. Yeah, I need to hear this. That's what you listen, black men. Listen here. I need you to understand this point right here. If you don't, if you if you understand anything, I want you to understand this. These quiches, right? They will they will go to work and be subservient to their boss. They'll listen to their boss. Their boss tell them what to do. Whether it's a man or a woman, usually a man, they'll listen to everything that person tells them to do without any guff, without any pushback, nothing, right? And then they'll come home to that person that they're actually living with, the guy that they're actually with and won't listen to nothing at all. And the, the reason why this is happening why this has always happened because black men never treated them like their bosses treated them. Oh, you don't want to listen? Okay, here's a reprimand. Do it again, you're fired. Oh, you don't, oh, this your second time not listening? Okay, here's your pink slip. You're gone. Black men never treated them like their jobs when they should have treated them the same way. They should have treated them the same way. Okay, you don't want to listen to anything I got to say? You got to go. That's what this dude did. That's what this dude did. Let, let, let's go back. Just really a great thing to be. But because I don't do it his way, black woman, back me on this, okay? If I don't, if I don't do it his way, he takes his marbles. He takes his support. He takes his resource. He takes his knowledge. He takes his guidance and he leaves. That's how it's supposed to go. That's right. That's how it's supposed to go. You don't do it his way. He takes his knowledge. He takes his resources. And he leaves. That's exactly how it's supposed to go. He takes he takes his marbles and he's gone. Do you hear this? I'm gonna play that again. This sounds insane. That's the only reason why I'm playing it. This don't this was a couple of years ago. She had to switch her whole tune up because it got too real for her out there. They started cutting off everything. Oh, oh, okay, we see you. Yeah, we stopping this, we stopping that, we stopping all that out there. Because Keisha don't run nothing out there. Keisha is only a crash test. Crash test. Dummy out there. That's it. Crash test. Just really a great thing to be. But because I don't do it his way, black woman, back me on this, okay? If I don't, if I don't do it his way, he takes his marbles. He takes his support. He takes his resource, he takes his knowledge, he takes his guidance, and he leaves. That's what he's supposed to do. Salute to him. Salute to him. Whoever you are, salute to you. That, that's how it's supposed to go. You wasn't supposed to get with her in the first place. At least you understood that part. Not supposed to. You don't listen to me. All right, cool. You're fired. You're fired. Knowing I need it. Knowing I need it. I'm new to 
tap. You know I'm new to tap, right? How about how about how about you knowing you need it, yet you still run your mouth? How about you knowing you need it, but yet you still run your mouth? How about that? How about that? Remember I told you all about the Keisha? Remember I told you about the Keisha, um, a friend of mine? The Keisha was behind him and hit his car. She didn't do any like real damage. It was like a a, a, a a scrape there, a scrape and a small dent. He saw it. He saw it, but he was so much in a rush, he had to be somewhere for a meeting. He told Keisha it's okay. Got back in his car, but was about to get back in his car. She said, hold up. Hold up. My car has a dent in it. You know what he said? He said, wait, you hit me, though. She hit his car from behind, which means you're automatically at fault. You hit somebody from behind, you're automatically at fault. She hit his car from behind. You know what she asked? She said, give me a couple of hundred dollars. Give me, I think she asked for like a couple of hundred dollars. Or she or he or she was gonna call the police. He said, you know what? Let's call them. You know why she thought, you know why she thought he was gonna go for that? Because she took him trying to leave and go about his business as he's probably don't have valid a valid driver's license. Now understand something. This brother. This brother is three-piece suit on, going to a meeting. He suited up, and she still looked at him and thought he must not have, not saying that they don't, but usually brothers that care about themselves, especially their parents, especially their lifestyle, that's something small. Having a license, that's not going to get into their way. Having a license, uh, a license that's, uh, you know, not suspended. That's not, that's something small. You're not going to have a suspended license. If you trying to get, if you, if you're a brother of some substance trying to get your life, trying to, trying to get more out of life, you're not going to have something small as a suspended license holding you back. Brother's been driving for 20, 30 years, never had a suspended license. Maybe had to pay some tickets. So I don't know what she was thinking by looking at him to think that because she's usually around a bunch of pookies. That would it usually be. They'd be around a bunch of pookies and think the black men have the same issues as the pookies they have, the pookies they'd be around. So she immediately thought, he probably doesn't have a valid driver's license. So he said, you know what? Yeah, I'll call the police. You know what happened? When she saw him on the phone, she was like, you know what? No, no, all right, it's cool. She realized he wasn't bluffing. He said, no, no, we're going to stay here. I got your driver's license. I mean, I got your license plate, so you can run off if you want. I got your license plate. You can run off if you want. You know what? The police came, took the report. Keisha had to pay for the damage, which wasn't a lot, which wasn't a lot. But since she got into an accident, you know her premiums went up. just for thinking she was in control. Just for thinking she was in control.
just for thinking she was in control. A brother tried to give you a leeway. Just because he tried to give you a leeway, you took it as he doesn't have his th- he he doesn't have his uh his stuff together. And then you got these Keishas who know they need help. They need these guys. And you still mouthing off. This was her a couple of years ago. There's more videos I could put up of her just going in on black men. But to see that 360 shift, why? Ah, because it got dark for you. It got dark for you. Black man, you're going to start seeing this a lot more. You're going to you, you're going to be seeing this more and more. But what I'm going to tell you, right, before I end this video, right, before I end this live, right, what I'm going to tell you is that I need y'all to, every time you, you know, that weakness of trying to feel bad for them or feel sorry for them, think about the treatment you receive. Think about the treatment you receive dealing with them. Think about the treatment. The treatment is universal. Think about the bad treatment. Think about all the times they they talk crazy to you. They talk to you like they like they can beat you. Like they could like they, they could shoot the fade with you. Think about all the times that when you were with them and trying to do right by them, all they tried to do was embarrass you. Think about it. Think about all the times you try to do right by them, they went behind your back and did something slimy. Think about all the times all you wanted to do was be nice and do right by them, and they didn't even want to give you a smile. Think about it. When you see them homeless <laughs> by McDonald's with the change cup begging, think about it. Think about it. Shout out to Salty with the super chat. He said, hold the line, black men. Don't give them a dime. Don't give them a dime. Uh, don't 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 take them to Pound Town. That's what I'm getting. Don't take them to Pound Town or shoulder to cry on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think about all the time they were rude to you. Yes. Think about all the times they were rude to you. Think about the times. They didn't even know you and they were just rude to you. Think about all that, man. Anyway, I just wanted to do this. We're checking with the brothers. Uh, great live today. Salute to the brothers that was in the live. Salute to the brothers that's here. Salute to the brothers that support the channel. Uh, the channel's growing. And, you know, can't couldn't have couldn't have done it. We couldn't, we can can't do it without the brothers. This is a no Keisha zone. This is a black man's channel. Only black men allowed. I've said that from the beginning. So salute to the brothers. Uh, uh, Isaac with the super chat. He said, uh, black men are for struggle and survival. Brad is for soft life. You hear them say it all the time online. Type in soft life and read the comments. Every Keisha is a clan. Yeah. Every Keisha is a race soldier at heart. Yep. Yep, this is a fact. This is a fact. This is a fact. Shout out to the brothers, though. Um, salute, stay in the shadows, and enjoy the rest of the, enjoy the rest of the day. It's eleven fifty right now. Still morning time. Enjoy the rest of the day, black men. Salute.